Hello, good evening, and welcome inside the Q30 Sports Post Game Show. Alongside Kyle Lavasser, I'm MJ Baird. Each year, the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team plays its game against Yale in, what, in a game that is called the Heroes Hat Game. This game in memory of Joe Muscali, the father of three Quinnipiac alum, tragically lost his lives in the September 11th attacks in New York. He was a first responder at this event. Well, after this year's game, the Heroes Hat is staying here in Hamden, Kyle. So you may be wondering how. Let's have a look at the action. Number four ranked Quinnipiac taking on their arch rival Yale. Only eight miles separate the schools in, is in what is called the Battle of Whitney Avenue. And Bobcat Nation was in full force tonight. And their own president, Judy Olian, was in attendance at the University Club. Her first Yale game, Kyle, let's see what kind of uh, performance she got to, saw for, got to see from the Bobcats. First possession of the game, Quinnipiac wins the faceoff and gets a scoring opportunity. And Kyle, they never looked back from there. This game was all Bobcats. It was the most shots Quinnipiac has had in a period, 24 on net in the first frame. Yale only had 23 shots the entire game. Wow. One of those shots there, Nick Germain with the goal. That puts the Bobcats up one to nothing. So to the second period we go. Craig Martin finds a good pass to Peter Deliberatori. Back out front to William Falstrom for the easy goal. That puts Quinnipiac up two nothing. Later on in the frame, Luke Shiplow. Little show and go there. That one low side on the ice for a goal. Quinnipiac up three nothing. And Kyle, the third period is where the fans really got into it. Have a listen. That, of course, the patented Quinnipiac tequila song from the pep band. And Mike Lombardi fed right off of that one. Puts that one in the back of the net. 4 nothing Quinnipiac. That would be your final. As I mentioned before, the Heroes hat stays in Hamden, this time for the sixth straight year. A huge win for Quinnipiac, especially uh, with standing implications. But also, you see there the entire team with the Mescali family. They went into the Quinnipiac locker room after the game just to talk about how important the game is to the community and how much they appreciate Quinnipiac holding on to the hat. All right, so there is how the game happened, but let's have a little more analysis from the game. We'll send it up to our beat reporters, Tom Krasnowski and Jonathan Banks, with more. MJ, Kyle, thank you. Quinnipiac comes out today and beats Yale 4 nothing in the 17th edition of the Heroes Hat Game. All three phases of the game went right for the Bobcats today. Offense, defense, and goaltending. Offensively, the Bobcats had 50 shots on goal. 24 of them came in the first period. And, of course, they got an early goal about 10 minutes in. That helped set the pace early. Defensively, Bobcats forwards did a terrific job back-checking and really getting into those passing lanes and breaking up Yale plays. Also defensively, Peter Deliberatory really stood out on defense as a solid two-way defenseman. And at this point, is it even worth questioning Andrew Shortridge anymore? This guy stops everything in the net. He's red hot for the Bobcats. He leads the nation in goals against and save percentage. And he showed why tonight. Beats the team's biggest arch rival with a shutout. 17th Heroes Hat game. It doesn't get more pressure filled than that. And Andrew Shortridge lived up to it. One thing for the Bobcats that you know, maybe could be a cause for concern is Brandon Fortunato, one of the team's best overall two-way defensemen, missed this game due to injury. It's unclear how long uh, Fortunato will be out of action, but his presence really did affect the power play in a negative way. He has a prominent role in the man advantage, and the team went 0 for 4 tonight without him. And Rand Pecknell had said after the game that Tough Toe's unit, I mean the first unit, the one that Fortunato's usually on, really does need to pick it up. So that's something worth keeping an eye on in future games. So. With that, let's toss it over to our other men's hockey beat reporter, Jonathan Banks. Thanks, Tom. Now looking at it from a Yale perspective, Joe Snively leads the team in points with 27. Second on the team has 13, so that's a huge difference there for the Yale Bulldogs. And Snively was not able to get going tonight, has never registered a, a goal excuse me, against Quinnipiac, had one assist in the 3-2 win for Yale in New Haven last year. But Quinnipiac was able to stifle him early and often. Peter Deliberatory made a great defensive play on Snively to could, who potentially tied the game in the first period. That left it at 1-0 Quinnipiac, and from then on, Snively really had no chance. So Quinnipiac stopping Snively was a huge key to Quinnipiac coming out winners in this one. Another point to make for Yale is that their puck possession was really sloppy throughout this one. Quinnipiac outshot them 19-2 and jumped on them early and often. Yale didn't have time to really play their game, slow the game down, and bring the puck up from the back. Quinnipiac was forechecking really well and hounding them offensively. Snively and other forwards did not have any chances to score. Yale did concede 50 shots. Corbin Kaspersky in net 
uh, had 46 saves, gave up four goals, but although he gave up four goals, he was still a bright spot for the Bulldogs. Made some great saves in that for Yale. Good rebound control, good reflexes to stop Quinnipiac's chances. He stopped Odin Tufto on a breakaway. Chase Prisky had a chance in front of the net at one point. Kaspersky was really, really played well for a goalie who's kind of splitting half of the time with Sam Tucker. So Yale has a goaltending look at his one bright spot. That's all I got from the bank. Kyle, MJ, back to you guys. Well, Kyle, that's what we've heard from our analysts. So let's hear what the players and coaches had to say. Here's Rand Pecknold, Nick Germain, and Luke Shiplow postgame. I thought it was, I thought it was a great effort tonight. Um, you know, the, the boys were locked in. The, the forwards were excellent. Uh, we were just relentless. For 60 minutes, Shorty did his job. Um, PK was good. Uh, Rink was rocking. It was a great atmosphere and a fun environment, and uh, we, were, we were happy to take advantage of it. It's a really good Yale team, and you know we jumped them a little bit tonight, and we were able to, to sustain it for 60 minutes. I mean, our fans are obviously awesome, and we take a lot of pride keeping the uh, heroes hat in here, which is a big thing for us. So both those, and we just get up to play Yale always, so it's a big factor. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know before the game when we were standing on the line there when we were doing the anthem and stuff, I looked over to Prisky, you know, it's like, hey, this is our last go here. We know that we have the hard hat too, and or the firefighter hat, and we don't leave, we haven't lost that since we've been here. So, I mean, it's just unbelievable playing in the Yale game. I mean, it's really tight, the, conf or the division right now. Um, I mean, you got to pretty much win every game throughout uh, the rest of the season here in conference just to stay up in the top four. So, I mean, this was a huge one. They were fighting for a spot with us, so that's like almost a four-point game there. How are you guys feeling down the stretch? We're confident. I mean, we, you know, we're on a five-game heater right now, and I mean, you just got to keep flowing with it. Uh, the, bo the boys were ready to go. They were, they were uh, excited for tonight, and uh, we had we come off a great weekend. You know, nice nice road sweep up in the North Country, and uh, the energy level was good. And um, like I said, it was one of our better efforts of the year. All right, Kyle, why have you here for a reason too? So let me ask <laughs> you a few questions. So we talked about this a little bit off camera, mm -hmm. but. Quinnipiac looked really good tonight. So my question to you is this. Was Quinnipiac on top of their game and just happened to dominate? Sure. Or did Yale come into this game maybe a little overrated, not as good as their record said they were? It's definitely a combination of both, MJ. We'll start with Quinnipiac. It was one of the top games I've seen them play the entire year. I included that with the likes of when UMass came to town as mm -hmm. the number one team in the country, and they beat them 4 to nothing. In a similar game tonight, they beat their arch rival in a 4 to nothing game at, at home as well. They were ready to go right from the beginning. Uh, and, and offensively, defensively, everything you could ask for, for from Quinnipiac was great. I'm not putting that aside, but I was shocked at how overrated Yale is after tonight's mm. game. They did not look ready to go whatsoever. Quinnipiac did a, a fantastic job taking away their best player, Joe Snively, and they didn't have any answer whatsoever offensively. They didn't score uh, at all. They really didn't have any great scoring chances. Uh, and then defensively, they allowed 50 shots on net. As great as their goalie, Corbin Kaspersky, was, uh, whenever you face 50 shots, your defense is letting you out to dry. There was not much he could do, even though he made 46 saves. Yale definitely, uh, they came into the game tied with Quinnipiac second in the standing, standings. I was expecting a lot more out of them. Quinnipiac was clearly the better team. Yeah, Kyle, you mentioned, you know, maybe Yale came out a little bit slow. Keith, Keith Elaine, the Yale head coach, after the game in his press conference said, yeah, well, he kind of attributed it to Quinnipiac going on that early power play. But really, Yale just didn't have much all game long. Unclean passing, mm -hmm. couldn't break out of the zone cleanly, and, and ultimately those things, you know, accumulated, making Quinnipiac look like the much better team, which I think we can agree they were. Absolutely. So I want to go back to something, though. You mentioned that UMass game when mm -hmm. Quinnipiac came to Hamden. We both traveled up to Amherst, Mass for the game between Quinnipiac and UMass on the second night, that one on the road for the Bobcats. So there's a lot of hype coming into this game. Students lined up outside the arena hours before the game, and this is the biggest game on Quinnipiac's campus every year. But how does this atmosphere compare to what we saw at the Mullen Center? It's an interesting uh, comparison. The Mullen Center at the time, UMass was number one in the country. The first time that the Minutemen were ever ranked that high in the USCHO.com poll. So you have to put that into it. But at the same time, I think I preferred Quinnipiac's atmosphere here tonight. It's only half the capacity that the Mullen Center has uh, here at the People's United Center, but the fans were into it. What you have to understand about Quinnipiac, uh, this is their, their thing, the, the Yale game, but yeah. also Quinnipiac hockey. With UMass, they have their basketball team, they have their football team. 
Quinnipiac hockey is it. That's what they live and die for. Uh, there were fans that got to the People's United Center at 8 in the morning today, on uh, Friday morning, when it's a 7, 7 o'clock PM. start. What are Unbelievable. They um, I mean, people just go absolutely crazy. Tickets sold out within 10 seconds yep. of when, when student tickets opened up. This is everything uh, as far as Quinnipiac fans are uh, concerned and one of the best uh, atmospheres in college hockey. And, and as far as, you know, Yale games from year to year, I think we've seen four now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and last year, I don't really consider that a crazy Yale game because it was the Friday leading into Thanksgiving break. So a lot of students had already gone home for the week. Before that, uh, we were filming Bobcat Game Day. I personally was not there, so I can't really compare that as much. And then our freshman year, it, it was rolling, but this, uh, this was a different animal tonight. I thought for sure um, it was the best Yale game atmosphere-wise that I've ever seen. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too, because in the past years, it, specifically our freshman year that you talked about four years ago, uh, it was the last weekend of the year, mm -hmm. and ECAC standings-wise, it had no implications. But this game, this had ECAC implications. So let's transition right into that. Quinnipiac... Yes, they beat Yale, yes, they beat their arch rival, and yes, they kept the hero's hat right here in Hamden. But bottom line, they got two league points and two big ones nonetheless. Mm -hmm. They were still one point behind Cornell as far as the top of the ECAC hockey standings, but this is a huge win for them. They go into the rest of their schedule. They'll face Yale and Brown again. They have a, uh, another game against Brown tomorrow night. You see the standings. These are the top five teams in ECAC hockey, five of the best teams in the country. Uh, maybe not Yale, I think, after seeing them tonight in person. A little overrated, mm -hmm. uh, but they still, hey, 9-5-1 record, 19 league points, nothing to uh, sneeze at, really. I mean, they still are fighting for a first-round bye. I think Quinnipiac's win tonight solidifies that they will be a top-four team in conference play, uh, and that is huge as far as uh, skipping the first round of ECAC hockey play. They'll be fighting Cornell for that final spot. Uh, atop the conference. They have the tiebreaker against them, winning up at Lina uh, earlier on in the year and then tying at home. So if they were tied in league points come the end of the year, Quinnipiac will be the number one seed. And, and then they face, uh, the, if you look at the rest of Quinnipiac's schedule going forward, as, as I'm sure many fans are, uh, I had mentioned they face Brown and Yale. Clearly, Quinnipiac is the better of those two teams. Uh, and then they also face RPI and Union. Those are going to be some interesting games as they lost to Union earlier this year. I think they win against RPI. And then they also face Clarkson and St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence, one of the worst teams in the country. That, that should be a win. So that Clarkson game is really the biggest game down the stretch, MJ, that mm -hmm. they will have. Uh, they've already beaten Clarkson on the road. They'll be welcome, welcoming them to town uh, for the final game of the year uh, in regular season play, and that might be a big one as far as conference standings are concerned. As we come down the home stretch in ECAC play, you also have to look at pairwise rankings. Quinnipiac right now, a, the, four, the number four um, ranked team in the pairwise, mm -hmm. that would put them as a one seed in the NCAA tournament if the season were to end today. But luckily for us, it's not. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for the Q30 Sports postgame show. Quinnipiac beats Yale 4 to nothing tonight in the Heroes Hat. Goals by Nick Germain, William Falstrom, Luke Shiplow, and Mike Lombardi. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can check out all our content on our website, q30tv.com. For Kyle Lavasser, I'm MJ Baird. Our beat report is behind the, scene, behind the scenes. Tom Krasnowski and Jonathan Banks. Have a good night.